Hey everybody, Zach again at NewTutorial.com. Coming in and making a video for you today. Um, this topic comes up off and on, and uh, I know other people have made made uh, studies on this, and I've done videos before on, on this topic, and I'll link uh, the other ones in, that I've done in the description. Most notably, uh, the, the issues on Deuteronomy 28, people taking verses way out of context in that, in that verse, <clears throat> or in that chapter of the Torah. Also, um, you have uh, the whole Arthur Kessler book, uh, The 13th Tribe, you know, having now been completely just been, been disproven. Uh, I've done videos on that in the past. I'll link that in the description below as well. Um, and so, but it still comes up from time to time, and I get these stupid people calling me an Edomite, and I'm not a real Hebrew, and <laughs> just ridiculous. And, you know, they, these people, ultimately, these people who love this issue have a love problem. They have a love problem. Um, and it's it's because they want to look at themselves with pride as being the chosen people because of their skin color. And they don't realize that, you know, being grafted in, uh, anyone can be part of Israel. And, you know, it's, it's you, know, you can take a grafting of a peach tree and grow it on an apple tree. I mean, you can even buy trees like that where they have five different kinds of fruit on the same tree. And Paul is talking about the grafting in. Let me be clear. I believe that Yeshua probably was dark-skinned. I believe Abraham probably was dark-skinned. He wasn't black. Neither was Yeshua. Okay? They were not black according to like the blacks that we have that live in Africa today. Okay? The, he just wasn't. The Middle Eastern people who are indigenous to the Middle Eastern region were not black. They were brown skin. Okay? They were darker skin. Um, and so, you know, let me just be up, up front with that. You know, the whole... You know, they do have a point with the whole white Jesus thing uh, coming out of modern Christianity, especially uh, different sects of uh, uh, parts of different Christ different parts of Christianity, where they have a white skin, blue eyed Jesus. That's probably not the case. Um, so I just want to put that out there right now, uh, right up front. But I want to show you something. Take a look at this. We're just going to go down some rabbit holes. This is the indigenous skin color map of the world. Okay, it's a worldwide indigenous skin color map. All right, that should resonate with everyone. You have the darker skin colors in, you know, the middle there, okay, and you know, uh, in in different parts of South America, Africa, Central Africa, uh, obviously Australia as well. And as you go north, and even if you go to the extreme south, you have less of that because you really the reason for that is this map. Take a look at this map and see how close, see how closely it resembles this map, the first map. This is the global horizontal irradiation. This is basically the UV radiation map of the world. Do you notice the similarity there? The, the, the parts with the most amount of UV radiation are right there. Again, Africa, Central Africa, uh, South America, and Australia. Those are the places where you get the most amount of UV radiation in the world. And it matches perfectly, almost perfectly, with the skin color map of indigenous peoples around the globe. Folks, I'm here to tell you right now. The reason you have different skin colors amongst the people of the world is based on really two things. Diet and environment. Let me say it again. The reason you have skin color is not because Ab uh, 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 Noah somehow magically had children of different skin colors or that Jacob suddenly... Or that. Um, Isaac suddenly had two children that were different skin colors, Jacob and, and Esau. It's not because of that. The reason you have different skin colors, okay, is because of diet and environment. What do they mean by diet and environment? First off, environment. Environment, UV radiation, where you live on the planet. What kind of amount of radiation do you live around? You know, is, 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 are where you at in the, on, on the round planet do you live at? Because the, the planet is tilted at a 23 degree angle. I know some of you people can't stand that. But let's just go down that road for a second. You have, you have a 23 degree uh, tilt on the planet. And you have different amount of, different amount of UV radiation on that planet based on that, based on that tilt. And that's it right there. I mean, diet and environment. The environment is the UV radiation, the vitamin D, because the amount of UV radiation you live around will uh, uh, dramatically affect the, the vitamin D that you, your body intakes, and that directly affects the melanin in your skin. The melanin in your skin. Now, some of you people have never heard that word before in your life. Go do some research for crying out loud. These arguments are so tired and so stupid, 
and just shows your ignorance on things. There is scientific study after scientific study, published, peer-reviewed, scientific study after scientific study that has come out and shown that skin color is 100% about diet and environment. Now, what do I mean by diet? Diet, uh, there was a number of pe- a scientists a number of years ago who were like, you know, we, we, get the, we get the whole skin color based on UV radiation and vitamin D and melanin, but what about the people like the Inuits? Up in like Alaska and places like that, they have dark skin. And so a bunch of scientists got together one day and they were like, we're going to go figure this out. So they went up to, to, to study the Inuits and you know what they discovered? You know what they discovered? They discovered that the Inuits have a high, a very high diet in vitamin D. Right? Whale blubber, lots of fish. That was their diet. That is all they eat. And those animals have a very high concentration of vitamin D. And so their skin color is affected by the melanin in their skin, affects their skin color, and they're darker skinned. They were like, oh, this makes total sense. They were like, oh, no wonder. Now, now we understand why the Inuits have darker skin and some other people groups around the world too who live in low UV radiation areas because they have high intake of vitamin D, which affects the melanin in their skin. You people out there who think magically that Isaac had two children, one black, one white, and that carried on through the rest of humanity, or you believe that Abra- or Noah had, I keep saying Abraham, Noah uh, magically had Ham, uh, uh, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and one of them was, you know, depending on which one you want to use, all kinds of discrepancies on who you believe who is. But one of them was white and the rest were black or what, uh, two of them were black or rest were white, whatever. You're nuts. You're absolutely off your rocker. And you're ignorant. You're just ignorant. So um, go do your research. Skin color maps. UV radiation maps. Look at some of the peer-reviewed scientific papers that are published on skin color and why humanity has different skin color. It's diet and environment. Diet and environment. Now, where these scientific papers get 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 wrong is the whole fact they believe it takes tens of thousands of years, you know, or hundreds of thousands of years for this to change and and for this to happen. Uh, just like they're wrong in about the whole creation of the world, it takes billions of years for the Earth to be created. And we all know the Torah says it was created in six days. For in six days the he- uh, God made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and all that in them is six days. Well, just like the flood happened very quickly and, and you know, the, the whole, uh, I've done the whole thing on the rocks and the layering in the rocks and, 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 uh, and the whole, uh, uh, you know, the flood caused all the layers in, in the geographic and the, the geologic column, all that stuff. It happened very, very quickly. And just like they're wrong about that, they're also wrong about the time it takes for skin colors to be affected. And there are a few studies out there that do uh, admit that it happens quicker than some of the experts say. You'll have to go do your own research, but it does happen very quick, very quickly. And that there was a um, there was a show that happened a couple of years ago, where they took some celebrities, some black celebrities here in America, and they traced their lineage back to their original tribes in Africa. What they found out was um, that you know, they found their different tribes in Africa, and then some of the celebrities opted to go to those tribes and and see where their ancestors came from. You know, because for the majority, because a lot of them you know were from different parts of Africa based on their DNA, and so they went back, and it was so funny seeing some of these celebrities standing next to their ancestral tribes, because standing next to their ancestral tribes, they look white compared to their 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 tribe. You know, their ancestors. You know, from what the tribe where they grew up at. Why? Because for the last couple hundred years, their they and their families have been living in America. And probably at somewhat uh, over, you know, back again, have integrated with, with white people, you know, in, inside of uh, America, North America, and their skin colors have completely changed. And so they're not black anymore. They're definitely not as black as their ancestors were back in the day. And some of these, you know, they couldn't find any, you know, uh, um, evidence of intermarriage, uh, but, you know, they were still a lot lighter skin color than their, than their, than their location of where their tribe originated. Why? Because they've been living in North America. And if you take a look at that skin color map, it's a lot lighter than most of the places in Africa. <clears throat> Not all, but most. Guys, it's a silly argument. And I know people get worked up about it. And, you know, and I've, I've made the point in the Deuteronomy 28 video, slavery has never been a skin color issue. People are like, oh, the blacks have been in slavery, and Deuteronomy 28 proves that blacks are, are the slaves, and, that, and that's, that we're the true Hebrew people. Dude, 
the Barbary Coast, the Barbary, the Barbary slave trade was mostly about 90% white. Okay. Ireland, 70% of Ireland was at one point sold into slavery. I don't see any, I don't see a lot of blacks in Ireland. Just saying. Okay. Slavery has never been about your skin color. Slavery has always and will always be about class. I am a higher class than you, so that way I can I can conquer you as a people and I can sell you into slavery. It's been going on since the beginning of time. So people all around the world who are taken into slavery, they're conquered by a higher class, a higher technologically advanced people group, and they're sold into slaves. Hey, I'm better than you, or you're better than me, so that way you're going to put me into slavery. It's never been about skin color. It's always been, it's, it's, it's never been a skin issue. It's always been a class issue. That, that's that's got to make sense to you people. I mean, no matter how hard-headed you are, that's got to make sense to you. It's about the poor versus the rich. The poor versus the rich. It's as simple as that. Simple as that. And that's why you see over and over again in your Torah, you know, do not, you know, do not do these things. Do not sell your, you know, your, your people into slavery. Do not slave trade. Do not, um, uh, do not give, uh, do not withhold judgment from the poor or from the rich. You know, see everyone as equal. But because they're, he's telling you that because the rest of the world doesn't do that. The rest of the world says, huh, you're an inferior people. So I'm going to basically uh, conquer you and sell you as my slaves or take you in as my slaves. It's ridiculous. Guys, it's always been about class. Never, has never been about skin color. Let me tell you a story. When I was uh, in the military, I was in Macedonia and uh, there was a, um, a, a, a detachment of Norwegian troops there with us at the main base, main observation post uh, back. It's called Uniform 09. And there was um, a, a detachment of Norwegian troops. There was also a detachment of Filipino troops. And I remember one day I'm standing there in the chow hall and um, I'm seeing this Norwegian guy standing next to the Filipino guy. There's a Filipino troop there and they're standing next to each other. And this Norwegian guy is this huge hulk of a man, you know, gigantic head, you know, gigantic shoulders, just huge. And the little Filipino guy looks like, you know, he's a midget compared, you know, next stand next to this Norwegian guy. And, you know, I'm thinking, wow, that's that's amazing. You know, and then I, as, as time went on and I, I reflected back on seeing that it made sense. You know, it's 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 the Great Dane versus the Chihuahua. They're still dogs, right? It's. The Filipino versus the Norwegian. They're still human beings. They're still the same race. It's the human race. But based on diet, environment, UV radiation, or lack thereof, you have two, you have two different people groups. It's what's called microevolution. And I know people think evolution is a bad word, but it's macroevolution. The, uh, the, the, you know, the differences between the kinds. Say, you know, uh, say you, right, for instance, you can take a, 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 an apple tree and graft a peach tree into it. Okay, but you can't take an apple tree and graft a giraffe into it. Okay, two different kinds. It's the same thing with humanity. There's variations within the kinds. There's variations within the dog kinds. You have coyote, fox, and a wolf. All a dog. But this, this is talking about a Filipino and a Norwegian. Same people. Check out this picture. This is a picture um, of two skulls. And I believe this was called the anomaly of anthropology or something like that. I'll, to, I'll put it on the screen. But um, there was a skull found in Australia of an Aborigine in the 20th century. Okay, that was last, you know, in the 1900s uh, by scientists who were in the area doing studies. And when they, they, were, they came upon the skeleton in a dried up creek bed, and they found the skull, and the scientists who found the skull were baffled. They were like, look at the skull. It's, it's got huge cheekbones. It's got a elongated forehead. It just looked completely alien compared to other skulls of people. And the, the scientists there, the reason they, they found this so confusing is because if they would have dug that out of the ground, they would have, they would have confused it as being, you know, 20,000 years old. You know, uh, uh, early Neanderthal or something like 40,000 years old, early Neanderthal or early caveman type type creature. And but no, the aborigines who were there with them on the expedition says, no, no, that's such and such, whatever his name was. He died and that's where his body laid. And we ne nobody ever came and got him. He's been there for, you know, years. We just we just never came and got him. 
and his bones were right there in the dried up creek bed and they took the skull back to study the skull and then they took the skull and they placed it next to another 20th century american that grew up in north america and when you compare the two they're completely different see that's anthropology the study of 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 the reason why it's so different is because that aborigine grew up using his mouth as a tool and it created the elongated and puffed up cheekbones. It, it created variations within the forehead. And so he was completely different than his counterpart who lived during the same time on the other side of the planet as he did. Except one in North America, one in Australia. Why are they so different? It's because of diet and environment. The Aborigine was subject to more UV radiation. He was subject to a different, completely different diet than the other person was. And he used his body in different ways than the other, you know, comfy, you know, living 20th century American did. It's, that's it. It's that simple. <laughs> but people, you know, get all bent out of shape and thinking that the reason people are different is because they're different races or what. No, it's not. It's the same race. The exact same race. And so I, that, 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 that example is something I use quite a bit. So whenever you see these people making these claims of how different people are and it's because of a different race or whatever, no, it's based on diet and environment. You can get different skin color. You can get different hair color. You can get different hair texture. You can get the inflaring of the nostrils. You can get different, all kinds of different ear features, all based on where you live and the amount of UV radiation you're subjected to, the diet that you eat, all of that stuff, how you live your body, how you work your body during your lifetime affects all these things. And then those traits that have developed are passed down through generation upon generation upon generation. And it continues on, but it can slowly be changed back. Just like, you know, the different variations within the kinds of animals can be changed back as well. So, um, again, people who spout this nonsense are just completely uneducated. They're completely ignorant of what reality is and what science says about the topic. Even though science gets the whole thing wrong based on timelines, the studies are the, the studies are, are correct when it comes to how these changes happen. They just are not understanding of how quickly they can occur. I hope that makes sense. Uh, and I know for some of you people, you have a hardened heart. You, you don't you don't care. You are you are hell bent on um, your race being the chosen people. You know. And for some of you guys who are all about you know you know you're just a stupid Edomite blah blah blah, and you're going to be subject to us, and we're going to be the true Hebrew Israelites. You know, I go back to Deuteronomy 23, verse 7. Thou shall not abhor an Edomite, for he is thy brother. Thou shall not abhor an Egyptian, because you were a stranger in his land. So, why all the hate? Why you, why you be hating? I'm not hating you. Skin color ain't going to matter when we go, when the greater exodus happens. You're going to find all kinds of skin color. You're going to find all the, the two sticks, Joseph, when, he, when Joseph, Israel, the house of Israel, comes out of the dispersion from all four corners of the earth and all the islands of the sea, it says, there's going to be a coat of many colors. All right, we'll leave it at that. Go home, read your Bible. Thanks. <laughs>